What is up, everyone? Look, when you're overwatering a cannabis plant, a lot of stuff can go wrong. It could lead to various things, root-related issues. Um, this may be yellowing at the top of the plant. Um, sometimes even potentially root problems to consider, um, including root rot. You know, that's that's definitely something that we all want to try to avoid. Um, now, root rot, it can come in a few different ways, actually. Um, Overwatering can suffocate the roots. Um, it can lead to poor oxygenation and development of that root rot. Now, root rot, it's a fungal infection. Um, it causes roots to decay and become... become um, unable to absorb nutrients, basically. So, um, as a result, you're going to see all kinds of different stuff happening with the plant. Um, the plant may show yellowing at the top um, due to nutrient deficiencies. Um, you may see um, curling of the leaves, wilting of the leaves. Um, pythium root rot. Okay, so... So Pythium root rot, that's a waterborne pathogen, and it thrives in excessively wet environments, right? So if the soil is being kept soggy and the roots just can't get any oxygen in there, it's going to affect the roots. It's going to cause uh, root rot. It's going to prevent the nutrient uptake. Um, you're going to get nutrient deficiencies. You're going to get yellowing at the top of the plant. Um... Yeah, there's going to be all of those negative symptoms um, from that type. That would be Pythium root rot. Um, Fusarium root rot. Now, I don't know if I'm saying these wrong, but um, Fusarium root rot, right? That's another fungal pathogen that it attacks the roots when the soil is just oversaturated and consistently wet. Um this is going to disrupt the plant's ability to absorb nutrients, um, same as Pythium, right? Leading to yellowing of the leaves, wilting of the leaves, um, the top of the plant. So most of the time, you're going to um, see a lot of this from overwatering occur. It's going to start on the top of the plant. Um, the roots are going to become suffocated and... Overwatering and oversaturating the soil with water is just going to displace all of the oxygen and suffocation of the roots um, is going to occur without like sufficient oxygen in the root system. Um, nothing can function. It's just going to be a complete chaos and havoc on your, your entire plant. Um, so it's going to lead to so many different nutrient deficiencies. Um, you're going to see the yellowing of the upper leaves of the plant once again. Yes, that's just, uh, it, it, it's going to appear as if it's multiple different things. Um, and a lot of this stuff, it can occur for different reasons, depending upon how you're actually growing. You might have poor drainage, um, and then ex excess water is accumulating at the bottom of the pot, um, and just surrounding the roots, leading to waterlogged conditions. Um, in my case, I was using an auto pot system, and I'm, that's what I'm using right now. And user error, I watered in water on top of water that was already present. And that was just that the auto pots are new to me, and I was putting in a compost tea, and I added in a few other extra things, and, and that led to yellowing at the top of the plant. Um, so how to address these kind of issues first things first stop watering the plants right we're going to want to let it dry out um over watering it is saturated and absolutely no oxygen is present so we need to uh, improve the draining um, so if you're in a, a situation where you're not getting a lot of drainage, improve that drainage. Um, adjust your watering practices. So stop watering right now until you see that soil dry back out. And then stop watering so frequently. That's the thing is like 
Don't overdo it. Don't overlove your plants like I did. I overloved my plants and then things went south. Um, and if the yellowing worsens or persists, you know, you might want to consult with a friend or someone you know or hit somebody up on Instagram. Um, so, yeah, guys, overwatering can cause all kinds of issues. And that's just that's just root rot. And um, we're talking about in the soil. Um, sometimes the plant itself will experience light stress, too, from these issues. So from um, the excess moisture and any humidity you might be pumping into your tent, that's going to cause the grow environment to just stress the plant out, and it's going to cause now light stress to occur also. And here's really why that can happen. Um, reduced transpiration of the leaves, that's a big one. When the leaves can't transpire, they can't breathe. So just like you and I, if you can't breathe on a hot summer day, you are not going to function properly. Transpiration is the process which where plants release their water into the air through their leaves. Um, and that's how they pull water up through themselves, take up nutrients, and then release it out of their leaves. Um, when a camas plant's over water with excess moisture, it's going to lead to reduced transpiration. Um, and this may result in the plant just struggling. Um, it's going to struggle, struggle to release the water vapor. And that is um, leading to the buildup of humidity actually around the surface of the leaves. And that is just basically choking them. Um, so high humidity in the grow environment. When the plants have been overwatered and you have a high level of humidity, this is a double whammy. So this is going to help um, increase the... Uh, um, light stress that we're getting uh, from the plant. Um, increased humidity levels in the grow environment. This is something you're going to want to moderate and drop those humidities down to somewhere between 40 and 60%. Um, if it's over 60, they're really going to be, if, they're, if, if the soil is wet and the air is wet, it's just choking from both ends and there's no oxygen. It can't get anything. So we're going to, we're going to want to drop that down. We're going to want to improve our airflow. Um, the high humidity, it's going to interfere with the plant's ability to transpire and breathe out and exchange its gases between the air. So overwatering, soggy soil, wet air i mean we're stacking problems on top of problems on top of problems and then if we add in poor air circulation to boot then this is where things really start to go south uh, pests love poor air circulation mold and pathogens love poor air circulation um so when the leaves remain wet for extended periods of time um they're gonna create a stagnant environment right a stagnant microclimate um, one that promotes the growth of mold and mildew and other just nasty stuff nasty pathogens um, so this is something we want to avoid we want good airflow the lack of airflow it can just compound all of these things so we got we got stress from overwatering. And then we get the stress from the, the humidity of our, our, our young environment. And now light is starting to cause stress, right? And now no airflow. So, you know, this is just going to reduce photosynthesis. Uh, that right there is going to stunt the potential maximums of your plant and contribute to low yields. So... Um, you might end up with a small stunted plant that just didn't have anything because if it can't breathe, if it can't drink, if it can't take up nutrients, it's not going to photosynthesize. It's not going to photosynthesize fast nonetheless. Um, so that needs to all be dialed in so that the uptake of the nutrients is equal to the uptake of the, the water, which is equal to the uptake of the light so all in all guys that is overwatering 
So in conclusion, overwatering the cannabis plant, it's going to have detrimental effects on the health and the growth of its of the plant. It's essential we maintain a balance between the watering schedule to prevent root rot, nutrient deficiencies, and stunted development. By understanding this stuff, we're going to be able to adjust our watering practices accordingly. And as cultivators, we can get optimal conditions to produce the highest quality yields possible, guys. So thanks for watching. Stay stony. Have a good night. Peace.